This is Tony on Tony 10 Speed. We're going to give you some tips on how to use a floor pump. By the way, if you're a beginner and have not used a floor pump before, check out the video in the upper right hand corner. Tire pressure, often written on the sidewall of the tires. This particular Continental Gator skin only has a max of 120. We don't want to exceed that or we're going to get a flat. When we look up on the Continental website, we can find that there is a range of 95 to 120. In our pinned comment below, we give you some details on how to figure out the best ideal tire pressure for you, that is, depending on your weight and the weight of the bike, as well as a quick method to figure out what pressures to put in the tires and some really important caveats, such as when it rains hot or very cold. Next, interestingly, this is debated, where to place the valve when you go ahead and pump the tire. In the old days, we would just open the valve, apply our chuck, and just go ahead and pump. The reason for this is that when we release the chuck, we can just push down on the chuck itself and not have a chance of bending the valve. One of the problems I have on today's bikes, if I use the 12 o'clock position, when I go to pull this down, I have a very sharp cassette on one side. If I do it from the other side, I have a pretty sharp disc brake. So this means that with today's bike stay away from the 12 o'clock position. Some suggest placing the valve at the bottom 6 o'clock position and filling the tire. The problem with this is that when you go to pull off the chuck you have a greater chance of bending the valve itself and you certainly don't want to do this if you have tubeless tires with sealant. When you go ahead and remove this at the 6 o'clock position and there's filled with fluid it's just going to spurt out all over. So what's the best compromise especially with your our present tubeless tires and also disc brakes? Probably 3 o'clock or 9 o'clock position to go ahead and attach our chuck. Don't forget to tap to press the valve to let some air out because press the valves are known to be sticky and if you go to pump it you, and without tapping it you may find air will not get it into the tire itself. Attach the chuck Open the lever completely. If you hear a hissing from the valve area at the end of the chuck, most likely the chuck is not firmly seated. You can reseat it or there's wear to the gasket inside the chuck and we show you in the upper right hand corner a quick fix for the chuck itself. When removing the chuck disengage and pull off the chuck. The air that you hear coming or hissing out is most likely from the chuck and tube and not the tire. Go ahead and tighten the valve. Now I replaced the cap. In the old days we never did but I find especially riding in wet or grimy conditions it does protect the head of the valve. How often should you pump your tires? Well in clinchers, butyl tires lose about 1 psi a day. So you're going to need to pump your tires maybe once or twice a week. If you're using ultra thin tubes, well you're going to need to pump them daily. Should you fill your tire with a CO2 cartridge out on the road, when you get home go ahead and empty that tube and fill it with your floor pump 
with room air because that CO2 is going to migrate out and you're going to have a flat tire the next morning. Tubeless tires. They say every two weeks. However, on my mountain bike, I check it before every ride because I vary the pressure in those tubeless mountain bike tires depending on the trail conditions. If you have any other suggestions, things I might have left out, please comment below. Subscribe to keep up with our latest videos. This is Tony of Tony 10 Speed Safe Cycling.